All right, hello everyone. Welcome to my science lab, AKA my dining room, because you can do science anywhere. This week's science investigation question is, can you make a paperclip float? As you can see here in front of me, I have a bunch of different liquids that we are going to test this question with. Okay, so our controlled variable, the thing that we're gonna use as the measuring stick for the rest of our experiment is regular tap water. I'm asking that question, can a paperclip float on top of regular tap water? Because if you remember, we've been talking about surface tension recently. So does regular tap water have enough surface tension to hold up a paperclip? After I test that one, I'm gonna test my paperclip with salt water. This is salt water, uh, regular water that I added just a tablespoon of household salt to, right here. Then we have soapy water. This is a cup of water that I added a tablespoon of dish soap to. Okay, and then we have fruit juice. I just pulled a leftover Capri Sun from my kitchen and I'm gonna test it with that. Okay, so our investigating question here is which of these liquids, or maybe it's all of these liquids, has a high enough surface tension to make my paper clip float? Okay, so to start off our investigation, the first thing I wanna test is, can my paper clip float just on the top of plain water? Let's go ahead and see. I don't know if you can tell, but my clip paper clip sunk pretty quickly there. Okay, so if you guessed that a paper clip was light enough to float on water and that plain water had a high enough surface tension just to make your paper clip float, your hypothesis was actually incorrect. But that is okay because as we've learned, it's all right to disprove a hypothesis. That just means we have more things to learn and we have different questions to ask. So the next question I'm gonna ask is, if I put a piece of paper under it, now this is just a napkin that I tore up from my kitchen, will the paper clip float then? Let's go ahead, pull our paper clip out, dry it off and see. Okay, so I have my napkin ready. I have my paper clip ready. I'm gonna do my best to put this paper in the water as gently as possible so that I don't make any waves that are gonna capsize my paper clip, okay? Or I might just drop it on the ground. Okay, so I put it in very gently. I make sure my whole paper clip is on the piece of paper. And look, can you see my paper clip is floating now, All right? So after adding, that little piece of paper, that napkin there, now it has a high enough surface tension. It has that extra support from the napkin to make my paper clip float. Okay, so this is our controlled variable. We know that a paper clip under normal conditions in regular tap water will not float. But if we support it with a piece of paper, suddenly it does. Okay, and we're gonna think about that as we move on to the rest of our experiment. So I told you the next mixture was gonna be salt water. So I have a tablespoon of salt. I have a cup of water. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in and mix it together to make my salt water mixture. Okay, I think that looks pretty good and mixed. It looks a little bit foggy still because the salt is settling in it. So I'm gonna take my paper clip and get it ready for this experiment. I'm gonna start by doing the same thing that I did last time. I'm just gonna drop it in and I'm gonna see, will it float just plain uninterrupted on the top of my salt water? It did not. I don't know if you can see it, but it did sink down to the bottom. Okay, it's still a little foggy, so it's kind of hard to see, but my paper clip is down there at the bottom of this. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna dry it off and I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did with my regular water. I'm gonna slide a little piece of napkin underneath and see will it float now with a napkin under it. Okay, so I have my napkin ready. I have my paper clip on it. 
and I'm going to lay it gently on the top of the water. Once again, I don't know if you can see this, let me adjust it so you can all see. My paper clip is now floating on the top of this water. Okay, so alone, salt water does not have a high enough surface tension for the paper clip to float. But once we add that paper, that napkin underneath, it does, just like our tap water. So I'll set you all back over here. And if you'll notice, I made sure to label each part of my experiment so that I did not get confused as I went along. Okay, so I'm going to move you back here so you can see. And we're going to move on to our soapy water. Right, so I'm going to take my one tablespoon measuring spoon back out. And I'm going to measure one tablespoon of dish soap. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that I do it over the cup because I don't want to make a mess of my table here. Okay, right, so we dump it in. You can see my dish soap is yellow, so it's going to make it real clear to see here. We mix it up. I'm getting a few bubbles in there as I mix up that soap. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to get my paper clip all ready to go. I'm drying it off. And the first thing that I'm going to test is, does this paper clip float just putting it in at the top of the water? It did not. As you can see, it sunk straight to the bottom. So soapy water on its own does not have a high enough surface tension to hold my paper clip. Let's try soapy water aided by a piece of napkin, by my piece of paper. Okay, so just like I did last time, I'm gonna put my little paper clip on top of my little napkin boat here. I'm gonna lower it ever so gently down and apparently just drop it right into the pit of water. Okay, that's okay though, because sometimes mistakes happen when we do science, okay? And that is why I also came prepared with extra squares because Miss Renneker is clumsy. Okay, so we put it back in our little boat. We lower it back down gently and lay it on top of the water. I don't know if you can see this, but I see a floating paper clip. Okay, so right now we are three for three. I don't know what your hypothesis was. I don't know if it was that they would all float or that they would all sink. But wait, we have a development in the time that I've been talking. It did sink. Okay, so sometimes that proves a great point. Sometimes you need to keep an eye on it for maybe a few seconds before you make any quick judgments. You need to see, are things gonna change over time? Okay, so in the course of that five or 10 seconds where I started talking to you, it already sunk, which tells me that soapy water doesn't actually have a high enough surface tension to support this paper with the paper clip. Okay, so we are going to move on to our last investigation variable. We are going to see can juice, can a Capri Sun support the weight of a paper clip? Okay, does it have a high enough surface tension to make our paper clip float? So just like every other liquid, I'm going to drop it in on its own and see. I have a little bit less liquid in this one because my Capri Sun pouch wasn't very big. And my bowl's a little bit bigger, but that's okay. You can see it immediately sunk real quick straight to the bottom. And that's all right. We pull it out. We dry it off. We get our little napkin. And we make a little boat for it so that we can test it again with this paper. Okay, so I take it, I lay it gently on the surface of the liquid, and I see, does it float? That looks to me like it's floating. So I would say that paper towel uh, with a paper clip on it on top of juice does have a high enough surface tension to support it. So juice has a high enough surface tension to support 
our paperclip. Okay, and I want to go back just to be sure because sometimes when I get negative results, I might want to retest them. Um, usually it's a good idea as a scientist to test your experiments multiple times just in case there was an issue or in case there was an anomaly or something strange with one of your experiments. It's always a good idea to go back and test it more than once. So since I had pretty consistent results with all the other liquids, but my soapy water was a little bit off, that makes me ask the question and it makes me wonder, um, was it really the soapy water or was it something that I did? So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna test it again just to see if I get the same results. So I have my napkin and I have my paper clip. Okay, I drop it in very carefully and it sunk again. Okay, so I think we can say pretty surely that soapy water does not have a high enough surface tension to support a paper clip, even when we put that napkin underneath. Okay, so our hypothesis that was proved for this experiment is that soapy water does not have a high enough surface tension to support a paper clip, to float a paper clip, but juice, salt water, and regular water do. When we add a napkin underneath, none of them have a high enough surface tension to support a paper clip on its own, to make it float on its own. But when we add that napkin, juice, salt water, and regular water do. Okay, so now you're going to go ahead, we're going to break, and you are going to fill in your investigation notes. You are going to fill in those observations that you made, the things that you saw with your eyes or the things that you heard with your ears. Um, you're going to compare the different liquids, and you're going to write about whether or not your hypothesis was proven or disproven.